met, de, met de hoogte. Uh, het is ook niet zomaar de locatie waar we zijn. Het is kort omgedoopt tot uh, Embassy of the Free Mind. Uh, Fika Kova, multimedia en videoartiest. En van internationaal niveau mag ik wel zeggen. En social project The Land of Good. Echt heel erg bezig om zelfs haar gedachtegoed te uh, te gaan implementeren in het onderwijssysteem. Te begin in Nederland, maar het liefst natuurlijk uh, uh, wereldwijd. Uh, het gaat uh, over de disbalance van de gender balance. Dus de male en de female part die we eigenlijk allemaal in ons hebben. Uh, een vrije geest in een uh, vrije ruimte. En dus een mooie plek voor reflecties van de, van de geest. Een inspirerende avond. We are used to the world made by men and for men. An independent archaeology opened a new world of possibilities for my land of good project and started to look for female driven society in far, far away past. Our history books picture our ancestors as wild, aggressive savages. The archaeologists and anthropologists around the world start to insist on re-looking the history books. Almost anything they teach us about the ancient history is wrong. There are extraordinary things to be found. Pre-agrarian times and the agrarian times. The physical evidence of the pre-agrarian culture being probably even more advanced than our agrarian culture. The gender balance might have something to do with it. Who built this? Look at the scale of it. Who built this? That the pre-agrarian culture was pretty much into worshipping a female. There are numerous statues of goddesses found around. There are megalithic statues found of male and female next to each other. They have the powers to rule the world in harmony with men. But what were those female powers? To bring both worlds in balance, the extreme female society would be as dangerous. Everything what is out of balance is meant to fall eventually. We will look for our own female powers instead of trying to imitate men and become men. Isn't it time to come out of this shadow? What did change around 10,000 BC when the history of women's subordination started? At schools and universities, we learned that the progress is always a pure male prerogative. Even today, when physical evidence occurs, could it have something to do with the worshipping of a woman? That the origin of humankind started with the control of fire and the creation of tools. And from there on, it went kind of automatically that the rest of the evolution steps are also made thanks to the male abilities to implement physical power. Let us relook. Once in a long while, the parallel realities of our universe cross each other, giving a precious opportunity to exchange the knowledge between the same and yet the different worlds. What kind of government is ruling your society? What is government? In a patriarchal society without the government would be chaos and anarchy. Matriarchy doesn't have a government. It has also no chaos or anarchy. If you don't have a government, how is your society functioning? How do you control taxes, media, people? What is taxes? Money. What is money? You don't have money? How do you pay for everything? With favors. It is always just an exchange of favors. To expect something back is considered bad manners. You do a favor because you want to. How is it possible? Through the right education. Being a mother is a highly respected profession. The best mothers are the superstars. They are the most powerful and the richest ones. In your patriarchal society, how do the mothers manage? 
but women in general are doing much better these days. They can work and have a career. They have big help from technology. They enjoy emancipation. What is emancipation? Our president is too busy for this kind of... Uh... Femininities? Yes, forgive me, but he has the war to deal with. Doesn't he have the power to deal with well-being instead? In our understanding, he is working on our well-being by trying to kill the bad guy. We we'll try to shift your attention from violence to kindness. The society that worships war heroes, conquerors and other violence-related personalities might be challenging for her. You call them national heroes. Although the essence stays the same for our mother, if she loses even one of her children, the war considered to be lost for both parties. In our dimension, the only victory is when conflicting sides find the courage to come to an agreement. We can count on our mother. She holds the mastery in negotiations. So the wars never happen. Your philosophy is that there is no truth, but only a perception. So you live truthless. And you? You know what the truth is? Of course, we always knew it. Wow, this is getting better and better. <laughs>